I'm wearing a Trump tie because I'm a slave to making people trust me because I wear a suit. It kind of pisses me off because um, the way you look is everything. So everyone, when they see you wearing a suit, suddenly trusts you. Um, see, I, I've got this problem that ever since I was a child, I can remember um, people trying to fight my dad, like random people. And you can tell me that you don't like unfounded allegations. When you were 14 years old and you ran away from home and you were living with these people that said they were Crips, but they were white. Well, you said you were a Mexican mafia and a Crip, which, um, like, I mean, I know Mexican mafia exists, but I always consider Mexican mafia basically another gang that I don't, I don't talk about. All right, so let me think about this. Um, since I was a kid, people told me there were parts of these gangs in weird places, like Colorado, like in a really fancy neighborhood. Suddenly you're hanging out with the Crips. That's because I want you gang affiliated. I want to make sure that you get stabbed in prison. All right, so when I tell you that a grown man I had never spoken to in my entire life started punching me like over and over again in the head and you say, well, that's an unfounded allegation. There, there's no way that was a police officer. You can't prove it. And what I'll tell you is, I'm never gonna be able to prove it because you're always undercover. They're always undercover. They're always committing crimes and encouraging us to commit crimes. They go to prison, they're undercover in prison. And the reason I know this guy is an undercover cop is because he talks about a biker gang. And then he goes, and then he waits for me to talk about it. And he goes, the angels. And I'm like, okay, dude, do you realize like all the hell's angels are like 70 because there's no way that help that gang could actually stay together and do crimes. Like, it's like, Hey, uh, drug dealer. That's what my shirt should say. Uh, probably not. Um, so like, but this guy wants to talk about fighting the entire time we're in jail and he talks about fighting with everyone. And I understand that like you want to talk about fighting, but the problem with talking about fighting is it leads to people talking about fighting. That's what these guys were talking about that wanted to fight me when I, I ran to these guys that I, I thought were cartel and we were kind of hanging out and we were having a good time. And um, then the, my brother and I were hanging out and then there were these other two guys and they told me they just got in a fight down the road and then he tried to fight me. Uh, and then he was like, he told me he wanted to fight. And um, I don't know, that, I think a lot of the time people talk about fighting because they're trying to get in a fight. And when an undercover cop, cop in jail wants to talk about fighting, you gotta wonder. Um, and, and maybe he's not an undercover cop, but I'm just saying like, the Hell's Angels are like, they're like a play gang now because they can't be a real gang. So like, there are, of course there are Hell's Angels, there are people that patch for it, but they're like, okay, is it a real gang? Maybe they are, maybe I don't have the intel you have, but you've all decided I'm a Hell's Angel because I told you that, but then you also don't understand that you're talking about a gang from the 60s. And, and we, and like gangs are constantly, constantly dissolving and being renamed and things are being renamed. So it's just like, all I'm trying to say is always you guys have tried to kill me and whether or not it's, um, getting me to run away from home and taking me to like, uh, places that, you know, they're like known cartel people where no one speaks Spanish. Like maybe that, maybe that was just a coincidence that like when I was 14 years old, I used to hang out with a guy that had a car and he'd always take me to like the discotheque where no one spoke English. Because like, let's face it, like I, I, I don't mind. I think it's fun, but um, like, were you trying to do dual surveillance at the same time? Like you're trying to monitor this 14 year old kid and get have a relationship with a 14 year old kid, but then also, or was that guy, I'm just trying to figure out like, um, like, are you completely comfortable endangering minors? And is everyone is is everyone super comfortable with people doing that? Because um, it seems like 
the Colorado Springs people need to understand that there are a, a massive, massive amount of undercover cops that assume you're guilty if you're not on their roster. And Colorado is somewhere that people have moved because of mining, because uh, their, their ancestors were miners, or because it's beautiful and they had the money. And they actually, or, or because of military, um, or because they're super technical computer people. This is a computer place. Like we're, we're like um, computer programmers live a lot of the time. All right, or they're geologists, which has to do with the mining also. So all I'm saying is if you're from this area, you need to understand um, these cops make you, like might put your kid in danger. Like, because if, if your kid is associated with another kid and that kid's part of my family, which like mathematically, chances are you're associated with us, um, like you might be in danger. Um, and I'm sorry for breaking that to you, but you're in, you're in danger from the police and like apparently the dis district attorney if they think that they have enough to charge me because they're saying, well, no, it's clear, it's clear you can't threaten someone with a weapon. Well, we have we have evidence. All right, um, the threat back is not. It's it's not that it's a it's a warning in response to someone threatening me. Like that's completely irrelevant. I'm pretty sure it's, it is relevant, but it's relevant to you because you've now showed your hand. You're someone that completely thinks it's, thinks it's irrelevant, which means that you're probably someone that is um, an undercover DEA agent that is working as district attorney, but you're not DEA, you're, you're whatever. Like there are people that are affiliated with the DEA and people that aren't, just like there are people that are affiliated with the FBI and there are people that aren't. But do you know that I did a hunger strike? Do you know that there's like a massive list of the amounts of threats just against me, and that's not counting the list of other people, but the list of other, that other people have. I mean, you, sh you should know that by now if you're from this area, but apparently you're not intellectually curious. You just automatically go, okay, that guy's crazy, but then I can prove it to you that I'm a technical computer person that has danger strictly based solely on my technical like knowledge of uh, the American security posture but I mean obviously that's irrelevant to you because because you guys are really you're locally minded but uh, you're mad at me you're, you're saying okay he's from a lab let's put him away but then my lab has nothing to do with local sales whatsoever like you have no idea you don't even know if my lab's here like all you know is that what I do has nothing to do with here what I do is so international but you know whatever you guys are really, really thinking this through.